What's up, everybody? Sam Chalbowski here. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different from our normal episode, so I wanted to come on and provide some context. If you've been listening to this show for any amount of time, you know that typically I speak with entrepreneurs that have what I generally refer to as well-established businesses, meaning entrepreneurs who have a core business that provides them enough income to where they can work on it full-time without also having to be an employee somewhere or do unrelated freelance work work to pay the bills. Across the 42 episodes of Designing Growth that we've put out so far, when I ask these types of business owners to tell me about how they got their start doing what they do now, by far and away, the most common response I receive is that they originally started the business as a side hustle and eventually reached this critical point where they saw enough opportunity to jump into entrepreneurship and work on building one specific business full time. Because I know there are quite a few people out there who listen to this show who are earlier in their entrepreneurial journey. Maybe you're wanting to evolve from full-time freelancer to owning a business you can at some point sell or at least take a step back from. Maybe you're picking up clients on the side while maintaining that full-time job. Or maybe you have enough clients to quit your nine to five, but looking to reach that next level of growth where you have more flexibility and your income isn't quite as tight. If this sounds like like you or if you're a business owner who's just interested in the process, this new mini series that I am calling Go Build It with an exclamation mark is for you. Across each episode on each season of Go Build It, I'll be following a real life entrepreneur in the process of turning their side hustle into their main gig with the ultimate goal of building a scalable and sustainable business that provides them the freedom, flexibility and income they've only ever dreamed of. Every few weeks on the Go Build It miniseries, we'll be checking back in with the entrepreneur that we're following to hear about the challenges, stressors, and triumphs that they've faced since we last spoke. In addition to hearing about their experience firsthand, what I'll also be doing is leveraging my decade worth of business growth experience to help them develop scalable systems and processes across their business. We'll be talking about sales and marketing. We'll be talking about customer success. We'll be talking about onboarding. We'll be talking about project workflows and tools you can use to automate things all of that. So I kind of look at these episodes as a mix between a really cool firsthand account of an entrepreneur who is in it right now, but also throwing some elements of a consulting call in there, providing that type of specific advice and guidance you might only get on a paid consulting call or hidden in some course or resource behind a paywall. I'm incredibly excited to release this episode because it features one of my closest friends. He actually produced a amazing film for our wedding. He shot it on Super 8, he edited it, it looks awesome. It was his wedding gift to my wife and I. But the reason why he was able to do that is what Sean has been doing for years now is working with brands primarily in the outdoor space and doing a lot of work on ad campaigns, photo shoots at events, all sorts of stuff. So he's been doing that for years and he's finally ready to start going full time with that after he landed a couple of big clients in the last year. And I said, oh, well, this could be cool. Let me help you out with some of this stuff. And it would be cool if we could just occasionally record a quick episode where you tell me about what's going on with your business. So without further ado, let's go talk to Sean and jump into episode one of Go Build It. Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome back to Designing Growth. Sam Shulbowski here, host of this podcast and co-founder at Motion.io. Today, I am very excited to introduce a special series that I'm going to be doing. I have my buddy Sean Green here with me today, and we're talking kind of about his business a couple weekends ago and how he's in the process of scaling it up. He's worked with some big clients. He's getting people who are referring to him and he's ready to kind of take his business to the next level of scale. With that, Sean, great to have you on the podcast today. First, just tell me how you doing today. Doing great. Appreciate you having me on here. Seems like you guys are doing really great work. So happy to be a part of it. And yeah, looking forward to what we can do together. I would love to know, Sean, like your background and what brought you to this point where you are ready to start scaling things up? Yeah, yeah, of course. So 
Went to school for film and media, studied that in Rhode Island, and then from there moved out to LA, spent some time working with production companies out there, working as, you know, a PA, working under art directors as treatment designers, visual researchers. And then from there, went to New York, sort of did similar things, working on productions, and then COVID hit and sort of messed up all of that. And I moved out to Colorado, took some time out of the business, reset, and in the last couple of months, I've started working again, shooting photos for brands, working with production companies. So it's a bit of a restart for me and just trying to get the ball rolling and making sure I'm doing the right steps to create a successful business. One of the things that we were talking about is like you're at this point where sometimes the work is super crazy. You have too many projects, you know, you're saying no to projects, but those peaks, there's also like a valley where the work kind of dries up. You had mentioned you focus your work in sort of the recreation area, working with cycling brands, outdoor brands, things like that, and doing photos at events. But then you also found a niche where you can also do treatment design. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, my main gig at the moment is uh, photography. And it's been pretty busy the last few months, especially with the outdoor industry. You know, there's always going to be down months within film, photo. That's just the the nature of the business and nature of working for yourself. As of late, it's been a little bit slow. And I've been trying to be comfortable in the discomfort. And in those moments, you know, it pushes you to figure out new things and trying to figure out my skill set. Worked in treatment design before out in LA and and New York. And it's something you can do from your house on a laptop. And I really enjoy doing it as well. So just realized that, you know, there's room for growth here and opportunity to grow my business in a different way. And what treatment design is, is when, you know, you have multiple different companies working on bidding a project and they need to present a treatment, I'll work with the director on the visual style, what that looks like to give us the best chance to win this bid. So I'll work with the production team and mainly the director on a document to show how we would execute this if given the chance to create it. So that's sort of what it is. It it goes across multiple different fields, but my field is film production. And I can instantly see how that would be valuable because I could see treatment design being this overlooked part of producing an advertising campaign, producing a a visual advertisement or visual assets for a brand because they don't bring anyone on to do it specifically. Sometimes I could see it getting overlooked and a production company missing out on a deal. So I could immediately see the value of you coming in as an outsider with your own perspective, your own stylistic approach that is going to really support that production company in pitching this and eventually closing that deal. It was really, really exciting to hear that you've kind of identified this service offering that can also support your current work and also open up the opportunity for you to bring on more photography clients. Like if you do a treatment design for a production company or a brand, maybe they bring you on as a photographer for that next deal. You had said when we were speaking a little bit earlier that you were actually in the process of reaching out to a bunch of people about this treatment design service that you've decided to offer. Can you tell me how you felt about that thus far? Is it overwhelming? How are things going with that process? Like I said before, in this discomfort, it's pushing me to find new ways to bring in money, you know, creating, you want to put your best foot forward. So I'm creating a bunch of treatments that are in my style for these companies to see you because they all have people that have been doing it for them or they know people that have been doing it. So it's about getting in the door, giving them that wow factor and and wanting to work with you. So on one hand, I'm building these assets to present to them. And then also it's definitely a lot to reach out to 20, 30, 40, upwards of, you know, 50 and more clients. You know, this is all very new to me. It's working as a individual, uh, as a photographer and director at the moment. It's just me. So there's no one answering my emails or anything. It's just me. So I think that it is daunting to have maybe 50, 50, 60 responses come back. And how do you deal with that? And what does that look like for my business structure? And how do I move forward? It is a big step too, especially because you have this new service. It broadens the pool of the potential people that you can work with even already in your network. It sounds like you are doing a key piece of this the right way which is you're working on your portfolio. You're getting together past work that you've done for clients. You are creating new work that could act as kind of samples of what it could like to work with you. And I think that that's really smart. 
One of the things that we're going to be doing throughout this sort of mini series is I'm going to be checking in with Sean every couple of weeks, and I am also going to be suggesting things for him to do within his business. We will get to how he's going to functionally be able to use Motion.io for parts of his business in the future. But right now, one of the things that I see as the biggest opportunity is with you, Sean, you know, you clearly have a really great network of past clients. You have people that like working with you. You have people that are referring new work to you. And the first step that comes glaring to me, let's get all of this down on paper. I know you had said when we had spoke previously that you are kind of doing back of the napkin stuff, looking through your sent folder, seeing who you reached out to. And I think a perfect place to start for any small business who hasn't used a CRM before is like, let's just build a spreadsheet of everybody you've reached out to, some details about the project if they're a previous client, what you had said to them last time, just a couple of quick notes. So I'm going to send you that template to fill out and you can kind of just mark down who you've reached out to and what service you had mentioned to them in any of those emails. Because then if you decide in a month, two months that, hey, it's time to like start automating things a little bit more, make it a little bit more streamlined. Great. We take that spreadsheet, we import it into a CRM, and that's going to be something that's really easy to do. The other piece of advice, let's get some basic email templates set up. Let's get an email sequence for when a new potential client gets referred to you, number one, let's get an email sequence set up for when you are reaching out to someone that you've worked with previously. And then let's get a final email sequence set up of when you are reaching out to someone cold, like you've never spoken with them, but you want to send them kind of a portfolio of your work and hope that it can kind of start a conversation. And I know that one of the things that you had said, specifically when we talk about email templates and things like that, is like you are pretty casual about it. People like to work with you. They like to circle back up with you. But at the same time, you do have to be following up. And that's what's going to allow you to win more of these deals. And there's a way to do this with email templates. They're not something that you send off blind. You're going to be customizing them. You're going to be adding personalized tweaks to them depending on the person you talk to. But at the same time, I think that for any business owner who's trying to go to that next level, let's remove some of that friction from your brain. It's like why Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, all of these entrepreneurs wear the same exact clothes every day because it's decision fatigue. So let's remove Mm -hmm. some of those decisions and systematize things so you can focus on the other more creative aspects of your business that I frankly can't help out with. I don't know how to do a treatment design. I don't know anything really about photography, but one of the things I do know is how to build systems for a scalable business. And I think that over the next couple of months, we can do that and we can really, you know, get things rolling. So yeah, and I'm excited. I think that those emails can get a little bit bogged down by the personality and it will be nice to have ground to stand on, especially when you're asking for something. So I think that building those out would be super helpful and I'm super excited to work on this. I mean, we've been friends for a long time and when I heard about the things that you were doing and the success that you had achieved over the last couple of months, I saw that you were making a conscious decision to go into this business full time and I was like, great, man. Like, let's do it. If you need help with anything, like, let me know. And I think it'll be fun to chat and see like where you start to where you end up and see how fast we can get there, honestly, because I have the full confidence that you are totally capable of all of this success and capable of consistent revenue, consistent clients so that we kind of eliminate those like peaks and valleys. The decision to like systemize things within your business, it seems daunting until you come out on the other side and you realize, wow, I'm saving a lot of time. One of the other things that you had mentioned too were like the things that you need to send to clients throughout a project. What are some of the things you need to have clients review or they ask for before work can begin? Because I want to make sure that I know about this ahead of time as well to make sure we're not missing anything. Typically, it's a lot of like budgeting stuff, what your day rate is and and what the project's going to cost. If they need insurance, I'll send that over as well. Sending photos, sending videos, sending files. And then as far as treatment design, we do a couple of different variations, sending it back and forth to the team. So keeping those very structured and a good place to view for them and me. And that's sort of what I'm dealing with. 
the moment. It's just sending out files for review and then also just pushing things along as far as production and logistics, which flights, accommodations, where all that live. And that's a big thing I think we'll be able to do with Motion.io. And I think one thing that would be helpful to understand, let's say you get somebody to respond to an email and they're interested in working with you. What types of questions are you asking them? Are there any like consistent questions you ask across clients that could be helpful to have in a form? For every project, there's going to be different deliverables. So I think what is the deliverable in their ask? Is it a film that's 60 seconds long? Is it a minute long? Is it 20 photos, 10 photos, 50 photos? Are we shooting on it for a week? Are we uh, shooting a day? Those are all great things to know before hopping on a call so you can give them that rate on that call instead of you know having to rehash, rethink, and then have another call. So I think that's definitely a really good idea to have a form where we can sort of put all of our thoughts in, allow a note section to elaborate on these things, but streamlining that call, you know, everyone's busy. Everyone needs something right away. So I think that's a really good idea. So we have kind of like three pieces that we're going to be working on um, before we chat the next time. The first is this spreadsheet that I'll send you, the email template, and then I'll look at them and see if I have any suggestions for how we can kind of perfect that language so you can reuse these things as templates. And then the third piece that would be really helpful, I think, is if you could think of each of the different services that you're going to be offering. If it's a photo project, a video project, a treatment design project, for each of those projects, the questions that you would ask clients, they don't have to be the exact same for every new project. We can customize that stuff on a per client basis. But if you could think, okay, what are the five, six, seven things that I need to know from these types of clients going into that call so I can provide them with a quote. So when you have that person who says, hey, I'd like to discuss this further, you send that off through motion.io, they fill it out. You have that information going into a call. Yeah, it sounds Incredible. That sounds great. Awesome. Awesome. I guess we have plenty to talk about, plenty to do before next time. But yeah, Sean, man, thank you so much. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be really cool to kind of see where this takes us over the next couple months. That is all for today, folks. We will be talking to Sean again in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a special series. And then between those, we will be back to our regular episodes of Designing Growth with other guests. But Sean, you'll become our first repeat guest on this podcast, which is pretty <laughs> cool. So thanks again, man. And we'll talk to you soon, everybody. Take care.